सॉरी यस इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग एन आई टी मेघालय इंडिया शी हैज़ रिसीव हर बी टेक एम टेक फ्रॉम बी पी यू टी राउरकेला एंड बी एस एस यू टी बुरला इन द ईयर ऑफ टू थाउजेंड टेन एंड टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन रिस्पेक्टिवली शी हैज़ कम्प्लीटेड हर पी एच डी फ्राम एन आई टी राउरकेला इन द ईयर ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एटीन शी इज़ हैविंग मोर देन ट्वेंटी रिसर्च आर्टिकल्स इन जनरल्स एंड कॉन्फ्रेंसेज ऑफ इंटरनेशनल रेप्यूट शी इज़ एसोसिएटेड विद मोर देन सिक्स इंटरनेशनल जर्नल्स एज एन रिव्यूअर शी इज़ ऑल्सो अ मेम्बर ऑफ आई ट्रिपल ई एंड आई ट्रिपल ई सोसाइटी ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड मेडिसिन एंड बायोलॉजी एंड ऑल्सो शी इज़ अ लाइफ मेम्बर ऑफ आई एस टी शी हैज़ अचीव बेस्ट पेपर अवार्ड ट्वाइस बाई इंटरनेशनल एसोसिएशन ऑफ साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट हर एरिया ऑफ रिसर्च इंटरेस्ट आर इमेज रजिस्ट्रेशन सुपर रिजोल्यूशन इमेज हेरिटेज बायोमेडिकल इमेज प्रोसेसिंग एंड मशीन लर्निंग तो वेलकम राष्ट्रीय मैडम यस मैम सो आई एम आई एम गोइंग टू मेक यू प्रेजेंटर सो दैट यू कैन शेयर योर स्क्रीन एंड इफ पॉसिबल स्विच ऑन योर कैमरा ऑल्सो मैडम ओके यस सो आई एम गोइंग टू मेक यू प्रेजेंटर यस वेलकम मैडम थैंक यू डॉक्टर उमेश फॉर दिस इंट्रोडक्शन एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल एम आई ऑडिबल Yes, ma'am. You are yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Uh, you can start. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Ms. For your introduction. Uh, a very good afternoon to one and all present there. Uh, I think all of you are doing well in this pandemic situation. Uh, myself, Dr. Rajeshri Naik, and I am just going to discuss on a topic on special domain image enhancement. So, before going that, what is what is the what will be our discussion flow and. Uh, uh before going to the discussion i will uh, love to tell you that instead of a one to many interaction one to many uh, deliver talk uh, if it will be interactive then i will be happy and feel free to ask or interact whenever it is necessary so uh, in our today's discussion we will discuss about a very brief about what is a introduction to digital image processing what is its use what are its application in various fields and most importantly what is the special domain image enhancement techniques and we will uh, definitely cover some more techniques about that uh, image enhancement techniques and finally what are the observation and the conclusions so going to what is an image all of us are very much aware uh, about the uh, what is an image as i can tell you an image is a two dimensional representation of an scene so if we will find out an image image means we will uh, we want that for a visual interpretation of some uh, happening in surrounding our uh, environment so image all of us are acquainted with that uh, mobile phones our cameras all these things and we are capturing a image so image if you want to represent that image say i will tell it is an Uh, in a mathematics of mathematical point of view if i will tell it is a two dimensional function f of x y so x and y are spatial coordinates x and y are spatial coordinates and f of x y is the uh, intensity at that coordinate point so whatever image in the real time image whatever image uh, in the real world if we are capturing a scene it is if it is a continuous image then what we have to do we have to uh, make it uh, discrete discretize the Uh, intensity value as well as the coordinate value. Then only we can tell that this is a digital image. Means what? If our coordinate value as well as the intensity value at that coordinate point are discrete, means it's an integer value. Then only we can tell that this is a digital image. So the most um, a digital image encompasses number of pixel elements, number of pixels. The pixel elements are known known as number of pixels. So pix each pixel in an image corresponds to some coordinate point, and at that coordinate point we are having some intensity values. 
So here is the example. Here is uh, here we can see it is a two-dimensional representation. This is the two-dimensional representation of an uh, image in a matrix format. And uh, if it is x-axis, if the positive x-axis and positive y-axis, positive x-axis in the image processing it is just downwards, and positive y-axis we are moving from zero origin to our right hand side. So e, e, this is the two-dimensional representation. Each pixel, one the, each dot represents one pixel, and one pixel has some coordinate point and has some intensity value. So it is a simple representation, two-dimensional representation in the matrix form of an image. So next, let's uh, what are the types of images? As I am telling, these uh, as I am uh, as I will tell you that the image intensity. These are the values of the. Uh, means f of 0, 0, f of 0, 1 means at the 0, 0 at coordinate, what is the intensity value of the image f? So the intensity values, the values of the intensity varies from, uh, if you will tell that the intensity vary is only 2, 0 and 1, then we will call that this is a binary image. Means I will tell you what are the types of images. In the types of images, one can tell this is a binary image. So what is a binary image? We are having the intensity values only zeros and ones. There is a combination of only zeros and ones. So uh, we will tell that is a binary image. Next, we, if you will go for a grayscale image, sorry, sorry, if you will go for a grayscale image, grayscale image means a eight bit type image. So if it is a eight bit image, we are having two to the power eight number of discrete intensity levels. Two to the power eight means two fifty six discrete intensity levels. So we are having a values of zero to 255. If you will count from zero uh, intensity levels, zero to 255, it will exclude, it will include 256 discrete intensity levels. So um, that uh, say here is an image where we are saying this is a grayscale image. A part of the image is the uh, the uh, representation, the matrix representation of the part of a grayscale image is like this. These are the intensity values, discrete intensity levels or intensity values. So from that we can tell that that 37 is the minimum intensity level and your 255 is the maximum intensity level. So at that part of the image, what are the what are the characteristics we can get from the intensity values, intensity levels of an image patch? So maximum dynamic range. From that we can use that the dynamic range. We can find out the dynamic range of an image by uh, computing the highest maximum, the maximum of the intensity level divided by the, the ratio of maximum intensity level to minimum intensity level. As well as we can find out what is the contrast of an image by finding out the Lmax. Lmax is maximum intensity level and Lmin is the minimum intensity level. As we hear, here we can conclude that Lmin is 37 and Lmax is 255. So contrast and dynamic range we can find out from the intensity levels, intensity values. And the most important thing is uh, if you are telling that this is a 8 bit image, a grayscale image is a 8 bit image, then how many number of bits we will require to uh, store that image in a store? In uh, how many bits we require to store that image? The number of bits required is if a, uh, the size of the image is m cross n, means it has it is having m rows and n columns, and it is a k bit image, then the number of bits required to store that image is m cross n cross k. So this is all about a grayscale image. Next, moving to next, we will go for uh, the RGB image. The RGB image, what we can tell that the RGB image, the RGB image is nothing but it is the it is the stack of three matrices where it individually contains red, green, and blue components of that image. So it is say it is an RGB image means a color image where we are having separate three to separate matrix for red, blue, and green. So this is all about types of images. Next we will say move to what is image processing. Now we are acquainted that yes, what is the image. Next we will go for what is digital image processing. So digital image processing is we have to process the digital image for our requirement for the user and what are the user what the at the end what the user wants accordingly we have to process that image so that it will be visually appealing or we can uh, extract some more information about the image 
or we can classify some images whether say in the current situation uh, two images uh, two uh, scan, city scan images say or two x ray images of two people are there now say we we want to see whether that image what whether that person is infected by corona or not we can get it by by radio imaging processing means say city scan image test city scan image or x ray image of a patient so from that whether we will uh, we have to process that image we have to classify that image so that it, uh, we will distinguish whether it is a corona positive and corona negative so digital image processing and say to process the digital image for our requirement for our requirement means we can interpret that image we can classify that image or we can store that image for further processing for machine perception machine perception means we have to make it in such a way that it can be processed by the computer very well so this is the need of image processing so uh, as here it is an example of a digital image processing technique say it is the scan it is scan of images of an uh, infected person but the original image whatever we are capturing that is that is uh, not so much clear the clarity is not there it is not high contrast image so what we are using we are processing some we are using some image processing techniques so that it will be its uh, brightness its contrast should be increased so that it will it can be used for further applications so this is a very typical example of an image processing techniques next whatever image processing techniques we are using that image processing techniques are actually divided into three parts there is actually you cannot say that we will divide it into different processes there is a not a strong boundary line between uh, which image processing technique is this and for what image processing technique we can use for that purpose there is not a very strict boundary line but the thing is uh, we we can uh, divide our image processing techniques into three parts means it is it can be a low level processing it can be a mid level processing it can be, it can be a high level processing so what is a low level processing in the case of low level processing actually what we want uh, we will just we will give the input as a image as well as we also find the output as also image means what we just want to increase the brightness of an image or we want to increase the contrast of an image then what is that we are giving a input image we are just applying contrast stretching approach contrast stretching image processing technique and we are getting a output image whose contrast is better than the input image so what is that we are just giving a input as a image and we are also getting the output as a image so such an example noise removal of an input image and the output image is a denoised image likewise if we want to sharpen an image sharpen an image means it is uh, sharpness is very less means it is not properly visible we will use some image sharpening techniques to increase the uh, sharpness of that image so obviously the input is a image also as well as the output is also image so this type of processing is known as a low level processing then come to mid level processing mid level processing means we are providing some input as a image but at the output we are getting the characteristic of the image not the image itself we are getting the characteristic of the image means what say in the case of segmentation the example the segmentation is an image segmentation is a typical example of a mid level processing so what is the case of segmentation we are just segmenting the input image we are just finding out some parts of the image at the output say we are extracting another example is a feature extraction say we are just providing input image we want to find out the features of that image not the image itself we want to find out the feature of that image so feature are the attributes or the characteristic of the image so input is the image for the output is the some features feature descriptor of that image so this type of processing is known as your mid level processing coming to high level processing high level processing means we are using the attributes attributes are the inputs to the system uh, image processing processes and the output is using that attributes to make some sense using that attributes using that input feature descriptors to describe that image to make some sense so this is all about a high level processing mid level processing and low level processing so yeah, there are so many 
Uh, other fields associated with image processing, we can say image analysis, image computer vision, pattern recognition, all these things are related with uh, that image processing based upon the level of processing they are performing. So next, what are the applications in digital image processing? The applications, there are vast applications of image processing in the various uh, life. Uh, starting from your face recognition, medical diagnosis, agriculture, remote sensing, fingerprint recognition, industrial inspection, law and enforcement. So what is that? If I want to apply the image processing for the face detection, face detection means say uh, somewhere we are just performing, means some uh, gathering is there and there are some, uh, means uh, some, uh, something is happening, uh, some, uh, uh, someone is creating some problem, we want to uh, find that person. Uh, so what do we want? We want the face detection techniques so that person's image is not clear or say this is blurred or say some part of the image is not uh, obtained. So what do we want actually the image processing techniques is doing? It is just detecting the face of that image so that it can be used for further processing. So come to some examples. First one is say this one is I, I can say this one is the example of industrial inspection. So industrial in inspection means digital image processing techniques. These are the images where we can say uh, whether the number of tablets are filled or not, whether the bottle is half filled or full filled, whether there is some crack in the clothes. So these are some applications of digital image processing in, in, in industrial application. Next come to agriculture. Second one, this, this is the so this shows the number application in agriculture. So what is agriculture? So this is the this is the uh, image capture uh, of a image uh, of a aphid infected leaf. This leaf is infected by some insect. We want to find out how many number of insects find out, how many number of uh, insects have infected that leaf image. So we are just uh, using some image processing techniques means uh, here you are using histogram equalization, median filtering. Next we are applying some thresholding operation, then erosion. The erosion is a morphological operation. So finally what we are getting, we are getting the number of counts of that insect which is affecting that leaf. So this is another example of image processing in agriculture. Next come to this is uh, in medical science where your input is the brain MRI image where which is uh, infected by a tumor where you are applying some segmentation technique to find out the segmented area of the tumor. Next is say uh, this is the case of a forensic science it means we want to find out the you know, this uh, you can see in the first image the number plate is not that much visible but here it is not that much visible but what we want we want some super resolution techniques super resolution is also a image processing technique where we can enhance the resolution of that number plate so so that we can recognize the number plate easily and this is the fingerprint assess, uh, fingerprint uh, recognition and this is remote sensing images remote sensing images means these uh, these images can be used uh, for land cover mapping for weather forecasting or for we can weather prediction all these things we can find out by the remote sense the images remotely sensed images so these are very uh, very few i have shown but we are having a vast application of image processing in various fields Next is what are the key stages in uh, digital image processing? So digital image processing starts from the problem. What is your problem? We have to acquire, we have to uh, sense that image, digital image. Next is image enhancement means whatever image we are just capturing that is not up to our mark, whether it is blur, whether it is low contrast image. So what we want, we want to enhance the image, enhance the clarity, enhance the image content of that image. Then we want to restore that morphological operation, segmentation, all these are the key stages in digital image processing. But our key intention is to discuss on image enhancement. So let's have a discussion. So this is a very clear, very primitive example of a image enhancement technique. In the left part, this image, you can see that this is a very low contrast image. Though this is an image, but what this is an image acquired, but whatever image content inside that, we cannot clearly visible. It is not clearly visible. It is not a high contrast image. So we cannot apply that image for further processing. So for that, what we want, we want to enhance the 
resolution we can say we, we can we want to enhance the resolution of that image or we can say we want to enhance the contrast of that image so all these things and we can see the left image is a blurred image but the right hand side after applying some image enhancement technique this is a very sharp image so these are known as image image enhancement and we are just applying very various image enhancement techniques to find out to manipulate the input image to provide a very pleasing output so that we can apply it in further processing let me tell you one image enhancement technique which is appropriate for a for a uh, application it may not be the good option for another application means what say we are just applying a, a image uh, sharpening technique for the finding out the uh, image details of an image that is better for our say for image recognition but that sharpening operation is not appropriate for image segmentation so one image enhancement technique which is best for one application may not be the best one for the second application so image enhancement whether the image is enhanced or not that will depend upon if the human interpretation is the final one means whether a image is enhanced or not that we have to uh, classify in terms of our human visual perception means the human is the judge to find out whether it is a uh, enhanced image or a not not enhanced image then it is easy to find out whether it is enhanced or not because by visual perception one can say that the right hand side image this is the enhanced image but if we want to fed that image to a digital computer so we cannot tell that the visual the, the here the human is not the judge the human visual system is not the judge whether then how we find out whether the image enhancement technique whether the enhanced image is better or not that will depend upon the accuracy of the uh, approach means that we are just giving an image to classify that image we are, we are giving some images uh, to a computer we want that we want to classify that images which one is better which one is not better means which one is high contrast image which one is low contrast image so whenever some more number of images are fed to the digital computer it is find out that uh, 30 number of uh, low contrast images are there 25 number of high contrast images are there so whether the accuracy is good or not means uh, really it contains 20 25 number of low contrast images and 30 numbers of high contrast images what is the true positive rate what is the false positive rate how well it will distinguish between a low contrast image and a high contrast image so that accuracy will detect the uh, efficacy of the enhancement technique so next is what is image enhancement as i have already told image enhancement is improving the quality and the information content in the original data before processing it we can see here it is an image it is not uh, the quality is not good but after applying some image process image enhancement techniques we will enhance the enhance the visual appearance of that image so that the quality is also improved as well as the information content of that image is also improved likewise in this case also we can see this one is a blurred image but here it is a sharpened image so uh, that sharpened image that image sharpening is the image enhancement technique applied here here we can see in the last image this here here the image is too much blur blur means we cannot see we cannot the image contents are not distinct so what we can see by applying some deblurring technique we can enhance the quality as well as the information content in the right hand side image so this is the de enhanced image and this is the input image to apply to the enhancement process so there are various apply various uh, image enhancement uh, means images whatever input images we want to enhance we can enhance that image in various ways two more ways are spatial domain because spatial domain image enhancement techniques and frequency domain image enhancement technique. so what is spatial domain image enhancement and what is frequency domain image enhancement obviously image enhancement means we are just giving input as a image a digital image but in the case of spatial domain uh, techniques we are just directly doing some operation on the pixel values of the image 
we are just doing the operation in the image plane itself we are available with the image image means it is a two dimensional matrix we are having some pixel values so if we want to enhance that image in spatial domain approach then we have to directly manipulate the pixels of that image in the image plane itself but in the case of frequency domain what we have to do we have to first convert the image into frequency domain we have to first convert the image into frequency domain then we have to do the image enhancement operations in the frequency domain then we have to again perform the inverse fourier transform or inverse frequency domain transformation so that to get out the spatial domain representation let me clear about ones spatial domain means we are just directly working upon the pixels in the image plane itself but in the case of frequency domain what we are doing we are first initially converting the image into frequency domain representation we are doing the operation in that frequency domain itself then after doing the operation we will reinverse we will inverse the frequency domain representation into spatial domain to get our result so spatial domain representation to perform image enhancement in spatial domain is easy it is computationally efficient as well as it requires less resources for its processing because we don't need to convert our image into frequency domain so spatial domain image enhancement methods are computationally efficient and less processing resources are required to process <clears throat> so whatever image process image enhancement techniques we are using in spatial domain they are broadly classified into three types one is point processing another one is neighborhood processing third one is geometric transformation so uh, if we will tell that uh, spatial domain processing in a raw sense if we will tell we want to do the spatial domain processing of an image f of xy this f of xy is the original image input image what we want to process so that the g of xy whatever we are getting here this is the output image means this is the enhanced image after doing the operation on the f of xy and that operation is declared by the transformation factor t so the spatial domain process is related g of xy g of xy is the transformation of f of xy so f of xy is the original image or the input image we are performing some operation directly on the pixels of that image that operation is denoted by t after doing the operation we are getting the output image g of xy that g of xy is nothing but the enhanced image so f of xy is the input image g of xy g of xy is the output image so output image is the enhanced image and t is the operation on the image f over a neighborhood of point xy i will discuss what is the neighborhood of a point xy so if this is a very simpler representation of a spatial domain process so the spatial domain process may be point processing may be neighborhood processing may be geometric transformation processing so first of all let's discuss about point processing what do you mean by point processing so image enhancement based on point processing so point processing means we are just dealing with the single intensity value of an image so let me tell you what is the function what is the transformation function of that point processing the transformation function is this that is s is equals to transformation of r r is the intensity value of the pixels of the input image getting point processing means we are just doing the operation or we are processing only the single intensity value of the pixel of the input image say r is the input image pixel we are doing some operation on the r to get the output intensity value s clear so s is equals to transformation of r we are just doing a single point processing of the input pixel value r to get the output pixel value s so s is equals to transformation on r so in the case of point processing there are using three basic functions linear logarithmic and power law in the linear we can go for image negative logarithmic log and inverse log these are the basic functions utilized for the point processing in the case of image enhancement itself 
So let's example image negative. Image negative means what? This is an image uh, enhancement technique where we want to enhance the uh, means uh, as usual when uh, in the case of in the real life uh, what we want we if we want a negative of an our image negative of a photograph in the uh, previous days negative of a photograph means we want to enhance the gray part embedded in the dark region right so like here also if you want to find out the negative of an image so what we have to do we have to just increase we have to just uh, manipulate a single pix pixel of an image so that is s is that image negative transformation is related with s equals to l minus 1 minus r l is the maximum intensity level of that input image and r is the r is the intensity of the pixel of the input image so let's here is the example here is the uh, very uh, means example of an image negative before to that example just see the left hand side graph this is the graph where we will if we will map the input intensity level r with the output intensity level s the input intensity level is r we are doing the operation on the r we are getting the output level at s so what is happening you you see you can see this is the image negative image negative means if the input intensity level is at zero if the input intensity level is zero then what is the output intensity level at that point it is l minus one it is maximum when the input intensity level is zero means minimum at that time we are just getting the negative of that so at that time the output intensity level is maximum likewise if it is maximum in the input intensity level it will be minimum at the output intensity level so here we can see an example this is an example of an original it is a mammographic image where we want to highlight the gray regions embedded in that black region so you can see this is a negative image in which we can just analyze the image very properly very means we can analyze the tumors in that mammographic image by taking the negative image rather than the original ones so this is an image enhancement technique Next is logarithmic transformation. Logarithmic transformation. What is the transformation function? The transformation function is s is equals to the output intensity level is equals to c into log of one plus r. C is a constant. R is the input intensity level. So what is happening? This transformation is actually performing to match a narrow range of low intensity values in the input image to a wider range of output level. Means what? From this plot, you just see this is the input intensity level. The intensity input intensity level from zero to l by four, from zero to l by four, whatever is the intensity level, whatever the input intensity level, it is mapped to zero to three l by four. You can see up to this, if you will plot, what is the output intensity? Sorry, what is the output intensity level? You can see here, zero to l by four is the input intensity level, but at the output, what we are getting? You are getting three. Less than somehow less than three l by four, so a narrow range of input intensity level is mapped to a wider range of output intensity level. This is the case of a log transformation. So why we need this? What is the need of this? This is an example. Why we need? Say we want to here in the left hand side. This is the display of a Fourier transform of an image whose intensity value is lying in the range of zero to ten one point five into ten to the power six. That value, that value of intensity, value of that Fourier transform of that image varies from zero to ten to the power six. So, more zero to ten to the power six. So, if we want to display that uh, that high level of intensity values in a display, so you can see this is the the maximum intensity value is centered at the origin, and no further information we are getting. Because the what is the maximum intensity value? This is very high. The minimum intensity value is very low. So we cannot afford. We cannot uh, accumulate that range of intensity values in the single eight bit display. But if you want to display all the uh, intensity values, so what we can do? We can do the log transformation of that intensity value so that a larger intensity value will be mapped to a lower intensity values. Log transformation. So what is that? One point five into ten to the power six will be mapped to six in the log transformation. 
So after performing log transformation, you can see this is the Fourier transform of before doing the log transformation. But this is the display of the Fourier transform of that image using after log transformation. So we are getting some information about that image after doing the log transformation. Again, power law transformation. Power law transformation, it is also the same way. What is that? S is equal to C into R to the power gamma. C is a constant. Gamma is the power. So we are just change. If C is a constant and further simplify, we are just using C equals to 1. By varying gamma, we can uh, compress or we can expand the level, uh, the image uh, intensity levels. So here we can see when your gamma is less than 1, say for the case of your gamma is equals to 0.4, what is the input intensity level? Say this is just somehow 0 to after L by 4. But you can see what is its corresponding output intensity level? It is more than L by 2. What is that? So the narrow range of input intensity level is mapped to a wider range of output intensity levels. What when the case? What is the case of a when your gamma is greater than two point five? So it is see, see here. This is the input intensity level means it is somehow greater than L by two. But if you will find out this is the output intensity level, it is somehow L by four. Means what? A wider range of input intensity level intensity values are mapped to a compressed output intensity values. What is this example? Say so here is the example. This is the first is a magnet uh, means MRI image of a fracture spine. If you want, this is the transformation when your only C is equals to one. Here you can see we cannot find out. We cannot uh, clearly the uh, fracture is not clearly visible in this image. But if you will just increase the gamma value, then we can tell that means what we are increasing the gamma value. We are increasing the gamma value first one. This one is when the gamma is 0 0.6, when the gamma is 0 0.4. In here, the gamma is 0 0.6, and here the gamma is 0 0.4. Means you are just compressing. 0 0.4 means gamma is uh, fractional value. When the gamma is fractional value, then what we have got? We have got that when the gamma is fractional value, the larger, a, larger, a smaller amount, a narrower amount of input intensity value is expanded to a larger amount of output intensity value. So here you just see, uh, here it is darker, but in the output, the intensity level is expanded, means it is lighter. So the fracture can be easily visible. This is the application of a power law transformation. Another example is here you can see, this is another example of a power law transformation. Initial this is an real, real image and this is the way where we are using the different values of gamma. This is the gamma value is 3, gamma value is 4. So by changing the gamma value, we can just enhance the visual representation of that image for our purpose, for finding out the more image details. So these varying the values of gamma is somehow known as gamma correction. Means we are just varying the values of gamma for the better visual perception. Next is contrast stretching. Contrast stretching means what? If here you can see, uh, this is a low contrast image. If you want to improve the contrast of that image, then we have to use some transformation. So this is a typical example of a piecewise linear transformation. Piecewise linear transformation in that range, R1, S1, if it is visible, you can see this is R1, S1, this is R2, S2. And between these, we are just doing the contrast stretching. In that region, the contrast of that image is just in pitch. Contrast of that image is means? Contrast means it is the difference between the maximum intensity values to the minimum intensity values. So we want to expand that range, range of intensity values. So what we have to do? We have to do use a piecewise linear transformation. R1, S1, R2, S2. Okay. So it will use this piecewise linear transformation after passing this input image through the piecewise linear transformation, we will get that high contrast image in this, like this. This is the contrast stretching. So what happens if R1 is R1, S1, R2, S2, R1 equals to R2 and S1 equals to S2. Means what? These are, this is nothing but a straight line. This is a linear. If R1 equals to R2 and S1 equals to S2. Linear means 
no change in the intensity values identity transformation no change in the intensity values means whatever input intensity value is that that uh, that intensity value is also in the output image so there is no transformation in the in, uh, intensity values so this is known as identity transformation but if r1 s1 and r2 s2 are having some values it is monotonically increasing function then only we can tell that the contrast of that image will be increased so this is known as contrast stretching next this is all about a point processing next type of uh, processing we will call it histogram processing histogram processing means histogram means we have to find out what is a histogram histogram means it is a graphical representation of an image how many pixels how many pixels are having a specific range of intensity values that plot we want to that graphical representation is known as histogram means histogram means how many number of pixels of that intensity value is having a specific intensity values so histogram is represented by h of rk equals to nk rk is the kth intensity value and nk is the nk is the number of pixels in the image with intensity values rk so histogram will represent the graphical representation of the number of pixels of the image with intensity rk so if we want to normalize that histogram so what we have to do we have to whatever the number of pixels means say our image is 512 cross 512 image but uh, say uh, the pixel value 100 pixel intensity value we want how many number of pixels are having the intensity value of 200 okay so say 50 number of pixels are having the intensity value of 200 so what will be the histogram the histogram will only show the 50 number of intent 50 number of pixels which are having the 200 intensity values clear so here this is a histogram plot of some images say it is a low dark image so in the case of dark image we if we want to plot the histogram then its histogram this you can see these are the histogram plots histogram plots it is concentrated near the origin means its intensity values are not very expand means from if it is a gray scale image 0 to 255 but intensity values are it is a dark image so intensity values contrast is not high contrast is not high means l max minus l min is not high so it has the intensity values concentrated near the origin that's why we are getting a histogram plot like this coming to a uh, light image in the light image you can see that the uh, the histogram plot is towards the right hand side this is the low contrast image low contrast image the histogram plot is concentrated at the center in high contrast image it is uni it is uh, uh, not uniform you can say but it is uh, varying from uh, zero level means varying from origin to the right hand side means it has some means it has a wider range of intensity values but in the case of a a low contrast image its low contrast image its uh, intensity values are lying in the center okay so this is the histogram of an image what is histogram equalization histogram equalization is the process where we want to increase the where we want that our in, uh, input image should the histogram plot should be uniform you just see here this is a low contrast image this is a low contrast image or dark image we are applying histogram equalization to that so that we will get a histogram plot whose histogram is not concentrated near the origin rather it is uniform rather it is distributed throughout the intensity level throughout the uh, intensity scale okay so what we are doing we are just equalizing the image in order to enhance the histogram plot of the plot of that image like the case here what we are getting it is no more concentrated near the center whether it is distributed uniformly throughout the intensity scale for that reason we are utilizing histogram equalization means histogram equalization is used to this transformation is used to find out a uniform histogram of an image irrespective of the characteristic of the image whether it is dark whether it is light whether it is low contrast whether it is high contrast if we will go for histogram equalization transformation it will provide you uniform histogram of that image okay so it is not always good because we don't want 
a uniform uh, processor, uniform histogram. But rather, we want according to our requirement, we want that uh, histogram. Say we want an image such that the histogram of that image will be concentrated towards the right hand side of that image. So that processing is known as histogram matching. Means what? Histogram matching is a transformation where the processed image has a specified histogram. According means your histogram is specified. Accordingly, you have to find out the output image. The specified I mean, histogram matching or histogram specification. Specification of the histogram is given to you. You have to find out the output image so that that histogram of that image should uh, match with the specified histogram. Okay, so this is, these are some varieties of histogram matching techniques. Next, come to spatial filtering. Filtering means we know what do you mean by filtering? Element language filtering means we want to filter out, we suppress, we want to pass, or we want to reject some band of frequencies. So, in the case of spatial filtering of that image processing, it is a very useful technique. So, everyone should be very much uh, comfortable in that subject, in that particular concept. What is spatial filtering? Spatial filtering means we want to filter that image. Okay, filter that image means we want to uh, filter some noises of that image, say. some noise of an image. Say. So, spatial domain filtering actually depends upon a neighborhood and a predefined operation. So, spatial domain filtering actually what happens? A image is there, a mask is there. Mask means a neighborhood is uh, a uh, main say. A image is of size. Come to come here. What is the mechanism of a special filtering? Say so this is an image. This is an image. In that image, this is a grid of image. It's, a, it's having some coordinate points. Some coordinate points are there. So in that image, we in the filtering process, we want a filter mask. Always the mask, this mask, this is known, also known as a window or this is known as a kernel. So this kernel size is actually lesser than the size of the image. Okay, and the size of that kernel will uh, will define the neighborhood operation what we are going to perform. The size of the mask will decide the neighborhood operation. The coefficient of the kernel, coefficient of the kernel will define which type of operation you are going to perform. Okay, so spatial filtering, for the spatial filtering, what we want, we want obviously the original image, we want the kernel of size, say 3 cross 3, here is the 3 cross 3 kernel size, the 3 cross 3 kernel size, each of them are having some coefficients, W minus 1 minus 1, W minus 1 0, these are the coefficients, W 0 0, this is the W 0 0, means the center of that kernel is known as W 0 0. So that kernel is passed through the image for the filtering process. So what happens in the filtering process? At any point x, y in the image, say this is the image, na? in that image say this point, the center point is the x, y, the center point coordinate is x, y. We want to find out the filtered value of that image at the coordinate x, y. So what we have to do, we have to put the mask in such a way that the center of the mask will coincide with x and y coordinate of that image. Getting? So the mask is a 3 cross 3 mask. The center coordinate, what is the weight of that value? What is that weight of that kernel? W00. So W00 will match the f of xy of that image. Whenever we are just putting this kernel on the image coordinates, so these are the co coefficients of the kernel, and these are the coefficients of the these are the intensity value of the image at that kernel. So whenever we are just processing, we are doing the filtering. The filtering is nothing but it is the sum of product of the sum of product of the kernel intensity kernel values along with the function intensity values. So just see here sum of product of that operation. So let's have a look. If we will do here the spatial cross filtering, then what will be our output image? What will be our output image at that location x and y? Gxy is the 
output image at the coordinate of x y what will be that that will be the as i have told you that will be the sum of product of the sum of product of the coefficient of kernel and the intensity value of the image encompassed by the kernel getting let me tell you once more what will be your g of x y your g of x y will be your g of x y will be the product of this term with this term plus product of this term with this term plus product of this term with this term because this is the 3 cross 3 kernel and this is the 3 cross 3 intensity value of the image upon which the mask is there getting so what will be the g of x y what will be the output what will be the pixel con value intensity value at g of x y at the coordinate x y what will be that that will be the sum of product terms of all these things f x1 x minus 1 y minus 1 into w minus 1 minus 1 plus w minus 1 0 into f of x1 minus 1 comma y plus so there will be the summation the sum of product term will be this this way this way W minus one one f of x one minus one plus W minus one zero f of x one minus one plus like this. So if it is three plus three means nine. So how many number of how many number of um, sum of product terms will be there? So this will be nine plus nine. So G of x y means the center coordinate of the output image, the filter image will be represented as the sum of product term of the kernel coefficient as well as the image coordinate, image intensity values. So if we will go for this is the uh, single case means this is how, how we are just putting a mask on that image. We are finding out what is the filter out. So if you want to filter the total image. Now only what we have done, we have only filtered the uh, three cross three neighborhood of that image. We have not filtered the whole image. So what we have to do, we have to scroll down that filter throughout the image pixels so that each and every pixel will be scanned once, and that image pixel will be uh, filtered out. So what is the formulation? The formulation will be g of x y is equal to w of s of t. This is the kernel into f of x plus s into y plus t. So uh first one is a type of smoothing filter I means smoothing filter means it is just used to this is known as averaging filter or this is a low pass filter low pass filter means it will suppress the high frequency component high frequency component means in an image if there is a abrupt change in intensity value say noise like noise noise means a abrupt intensity value change abrupt change in intensity value is a noise uh spontaneously at a point a noise is occurring say what we want we want to so if you want to remove that noise we will go for the averaging filter or smoothing filter so this averaging filter means what averaging from its name itself it is telling that the filter mask the filter whatever the filter output the filter output will be the averaging operation of the coefficient of the kernel right so this is the uh, g of x y means what is the output image this is the what we have seen here in the spatial filtering Divided by this term. Divided by this term means this is the summation of the all the coefficient in the mask kernel. So this is nothing but averaging operation, right? So that averaging operation is going to blur the image. Blur the image means it will just suppress the high frequency component of that image. So it is particularly used to suppress the noise in image. So these are some averaging filter mask example. Say if the coefficients are one, 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 all these coefficients of one, one, and this is a three cross three mask. So when it will be averaged divided by nine, the sum of all the coefficients of the kernel, right? Here it is an example. These are the weights actually. These are the weights of the. These coefficients are the weights of the kernel. Means by what amount you want to average that image, right? So. You just see one by sixteen. This is the summation of all the coefficients of that kernel. So these are two commonly used averaging filter masks. And these are some examples. Say so this is our original image. Second one is if we are using that using a averaging filter of mask three cross three. 
and this is the averaging mask of using 35 cross 35 you can see in the case of a 3 cross 3 mask the image is not that much blurred but in the case of a 35 cross 35 the image is too much blurred can you can you visualize if it is a 35 cross 35 the averaging mask means whatever the filter output is there that will be divided by some terms the coefficient of a 35 cross 35 kernel so it will be the intensity value will be very less so that the the image visualization will be blurred it will be a blurred image so it is a 3 cross 3 mask as compared to 3 cross 3 mask 35 cross 35 averaging mask will provide you a more blurred image these are some examples next is nonlinear filter nonlinear filter means what is a nonlinear filter nonlinear filter means uh, initially what we are doing we are the filter output is nothing but the weighted average of the coefficients uh, of the uh, sum of product of the coefficient along with the uh, image pixel values but here what is there once performing that operation that uh, special filtering operation what we have to do we have to arrange the intensity values of that neighborhood in a some pattern ascending order then we have to find out what is the median of that intensity values what uh, whether uh, whether what uh, what is the maximum value of that intensity values or what is the minimum of that intensity values so depending upon that rank the center value g of x y means in the neighborhood of that kernel the center value will be replaced by the ranking of the intensity values in the neighborhood okay so what happens in the median filter the typical example of nonlinear filters are median filter maximum filter, max filter mean filter so in the case of median filter say what is a median filter so in the median filter it replaces the value of the center pixel by the median of the intensity value in the neighborhood of that pixel after processing 3 cross 3 in the 3 cross 3 mask neighborhood so in the center pixel what will be the in the averaging filter the center pixel will be replaced by average value of that mask but in the case of median filter instead of that averaging filter the median of that intensity value median of the intensity value of the neighborhood pixels will be replaced by that getting so in the case of median filtering it is used to suppress the some type of specific type of noise that is known as salt and pepper noise and it is particularly very much useful in the case of medical image processing where actually salt and pepper noise predominates so median filter is a very useful filtering technique to suppress that salt and pepper noise you just see this is a uh, noisy image this image this is the filter image using averaging filter and this is the filter image using median filter averaging filter may not suppress all the salt and pepper noise but you can see in the case of median filter it can suppress all the types of salt and pepper noise so this is a very example of a median filtering next sharpening filter sharpening filter means uh, in in this this uh, filter masks they are actually used to sharpen the image details of an image the center coordinate center coefficient is minus here you can see so these center coordinates are minus and the sharpening filter actually this is a laplacian operator laplacian operator means in that case if you sum all the coefficients of that mask it will be zero minus four this is minus eight that way the diagonal elements are entered so these masks are particularly used for sharpening purpose of an image so these are some examples you can see these are this is the blurred image a is the blurred image then b is the laplacian laplacian you are using that mask actually in the upper mask these are the masks whatever we are just using for sharpening of that image so you can see here by using different masks you can find out different sharpened images if you are using the uh, masks as uh, sharpened mask as uh, described in the previous mask previous uh, slide you will find out that different slides different masks will provide you different sharpened images so as per your requirement what uh, mask will provide you the best result that we have to choose so these are the examples of sharpened image. Next is a unsharp masking or unsharp masking or hybrid filtering. So what is that? It is an example of a sharpening itself. So what we are doing actually, uh, this is very important uh, 
in case of digital image processing. So what is unsub masking? It is sometimes the image consists of subtracting an unsub image. Means first of all, what we have to do? We have to blur that image. Okay, you have a original image. You want to um, sharpen that image. So what you have to do first? You have to blur that image. Yeah, subtract that blur image from the original image. So once the blur part is subtracted from the original image, whatever you are just having, you are having that you are having that high frequency components, or you are having that mask. One mask is there, which is the difference between your original image and the blur image. Add that mask to the original image, then you will get a sharpened image. Because that mask is nothing but once you have removed the blur part of that image. You are having that part. So one blur part is uh, removed means you are having that high frequency components. Once you are adding that high frequency component to that original image, you are getting a sharpened image. Okay. So this is the example of a. This is the very uh, example of a unsharp masking. So what is the case of unsharp masking? This is the original image, say, and this is the case of if once you are blurring. What is the step? What is this is the original image. Second step is you are just blurring that image. Once the blurring is there, subtract the image from uh, original image. The uh, subtract the blur track from the original image. You will get that. Add this mask to the original image. Add this mask to the original image. You will get the sharpened image. Okay. So this is all about your unsharp masking and high boost filtering. Means if when it will be high boost filtering, if it will uh, depending upon that. I'll just see what is high boost filtering. Uh, when we are just adding f of x y is the original image, k is a constant, and g mask x y means this is the mask image means this is the subtraction of our original image, and this is the blur image. F bar x y is the blur image. We are removed. You are subtracting from original image to get the mask image. When and we are adding the mask image to get the sharpened image. When the k is greater than one, that constant is greater than one. That process is known as high boost filtering. High boost filtering means it is just boosting. It is just enhancing some high frequency component of that image. Okay. When k is one, we will call that high boost filtering. When its k is less than one, we will call it unsharp masking. So, what is the example? Sorry. Just see. This is the unsharp masking, and this is the high boost filtering. You just see the high boost filtering is much more sharpened than the original image, as well as the unsharp masked image. So, if you will choose the value constant k is greater than one, then you will get a high boost. Means your high frequency components are more enhanced. So, next is some sharpening filters, sharpening uh, masks. Whatever you were just using for sharpening mask uh, for finding out uh, our sharpened image, this is one mask properly used uh, for. Uh, this is a robot. This is a robot's mask. This is known as robot's mask. This is known as sabal mask. So what we are doing? We are utilizing that mask in the original image, or we are convolving that mask with our original image to find out a sharpened sharpened image. Okay. So this is all about uh, the special domain image enhancement technique. Be happy if there is any queries from the students. Uh, yes. yes, students. If you have any query, you can post in the chat. Okay, and thank you, madam, for a very wonderful talk on the special domain image enhancement. Uh, obviously, our student will get lots of. Uh, from your talk and we will take uh, uh, we will wait for 2 to 3 minutes for the students if they have any query yes i will not okay, take okay. Mm. okay uh, yes students if you have any query you can ask in the chat or or ma'am we can do one thing if they have any query uh, they will forward to me and i will for and i will forward you, you in in your mail Okay, okay, okay ma'am. So we okay. can do that also. Okay. Mm, still, we have not received any query. That means, uh, okay, it's 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 good for students and for us also. Okay, just uh, yes, Salankar sir.
ओके ओके मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर यूर वंडरफुल टॉक सो यस मैम सो यस दिस इज अवर एंड ऑफ अवर एक्सपर्ट टॉक Okay thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you yes ma'am you can leave and also i am ending this session okay okay thank you